There are uh, clinical trials of psychedelics right now around the world that are they're looking at um, all sorts of um, mental health uh, conditions and, and substance use disorders. The most work has been done around depression, anxiety, post-traumatic stress disorder. There's starting to be a lot more studies of things like alcohol use disorder, cocaine use disorder, opioid use disorder, and then kind of smaller populations of psychiatric conditions, people with particular types of anxiety, for example, or people with eating disorders. So it's really expanding a lot. It wasn't always the, the case that, uh, that psychedelics were, were illicit drugs. In the, uh, in the late uh, 1940s, um, early 1950s, uh, there was um, a lot of clinical research that was underway uh, with, with LSD, and this gradually grew um, through the, the late 1960s. Uh, and it, it looked at um, the use of LSD for a lot of different um, psychiatric conditions, um, with, with the most evidence uh, being that it was helpful for alcohol use disorder, and uh, psychological distress, um, such as depression, anxiety in patients who, who had cancer. Unfortunately, there, there was uh, growing non-medical use, uh, and it was a very uh, uh, politically uh, difficult time. And, and uh, so R Richard Nixon signed the Controlled Substance Act in uh, 1970. The regulations uh, that came along with that made it very difficult uh, to continue that, that research. It's been a long process um, for uh, psychiatry um, to uh, you know, try to try to restore the ability to use psychedelics in, in clinical practice. There was a paper uh, published uh, in 2006 um, that showed that psilocybin could have uh, very meaningful um, uh, spiritual experiences um, for people uh, that could last um, a very long time and have therapeutic benefits. Other um, academic medical centers um, joined the effort, and, and now there are um, you know, hundreds of studies of psychedelics uh, going on across the globe. We're still at the you know the very early stages of figuring this out, but but it looks like um, sort of the the unifying uh, mechanism between all these drugs is, is something called uh, neuroplasticity. So they seem to allow the brain to um, to enter a state where um, it becomes more flexible, and it's um, it's easier for a period afterwards, possibly weeks to months, um, to to learn new things, uh, and so it's uh, it's easier to um, uh, to make changes to how you view the world, how you view your interaction with the world. That's why we think therapy is so important with psychedelics, because um, psychedelics um, have been used by a large part of the population. Something like 15% of Americans have had LSD before. But many of those people still have depression, they still have anxiety, um, they, they um, develop addictions. And uh, it's very different to take one of these drugs, um, um, you know, in, in a recreational setting where you have not done any sort of therapeutic preparation or thought about how this might uh, impact your mental health. Psychedelics are uh, unique among other drugs in that they uh, they interact with the environment the most out of all drugs. So if you um, if you use a drug, uh, even alcohol, um, you might notice that it affects you very differently if you're drinking with friends at a bar or if you're drinking alone at home. And so that, uh, that concept is called uh, set and setting. Uh, so the mindset um, that you have and the, the physical setting of where you use a psychoactive substance affects how it affects you. And with psychedelics, that relationship is even more intense than for other drugs. Patients are treated in environments that are very therapeutically decorated. They typically have one or two uh, monitors or therapists with them during the entire experience on the dosing day. And the, the length of the dosing session um, varies significantly based on what psychedelic you're using. Uh, the patients are encouraged to, uh, to focus inward on the experience that they're having, um, um, psychologically uh, focused material that might be coming up, and uh, they also listen to music. So we, we think the interaction between music and psychedelics is particularly um, therapeutic. And so there's um, curated playlists that sort of match the, um, the intensity of the psychedelic experience. Patients are, are monitored until uh, they're um, uh, cognitively clear again, uh, and then they're able to go home uh, with, with a responsible adult. There are uh, what are called preparatory sessions uh, before the dosing session. 
And in those uh, sessions, uh, the patients meet with their therapist, uh, they get to know them. So um, there's usually three or so sessions uh, where they're able to, um, to work on that therapeutic relationship. Um, the patient receives education about what to expect during the, the psychedelic experience. And they also set an intention, um, which seems to be very important for, um, for the therapeutic effects of psychedelics. The patient is asked specifically, you know, what aspect of, of your life or your mental health do you really want to focus on during this experience and try to get some insights about. And then after the dosing session, there are also uh, what are called integration sessions where the patients talk with their therapist about the experience that they had, uh, which can often uh, be quite profound. Um, sometimes people have uh, what are called mystical experiences uh, where they, they feel um, that they are in the presence of, of uh, God or, or the divine. And um, there's obviously a lot to unpack there. Um, and uh, they will also talk about uh, ways that they can um, integrate the, the insights that they've gained into their daily life, uh, because the, the the goal here is is durable behavior change that often uh, requires making um, changes in in your everyday life, um, things that you're going to do uh, repeatedly. So you know, developing an exercise routine, taking up meditation or yoga, or um, you're deciding that you do need to get into long-term therapy, things like that. So there's a lot more involved in the dosing day itself.